Live from the Fairmont Hotel in San Jose, California, it's The Cube at Big Data SV 2015. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is our final wrap up of day three of uh, Big Data SV, which is our event called Big Data Silicon Valley. And this is our, our companion event to our Big Data NYC, which is our event in New York City. And this is SiliconANGLE Media's event where we have specialized conversations about what's happening in big data on both coasts. New York City, we take a follow the money, follow the business logic, follow the, follow the, the, the key winners around going public, Wall Street, capital markets in New York City. And in Silicon Valley, we cover the innovation, the startups, the growth strategies, all the key things that make people successful that powers the engine of innovation. And we're so pumped to do that. And we want to thank our sponsors who let us do that. And, and having our own event in conjunction, out in the open, inclusive with everyone, is our sponsors, WAN Disco, Pivotal, IBM, Hortonworks, SyncSort, H2O, Trisada, InfoObjects, Platfora, uh, WAN Disco, Teradata, BMC, um, we want to thank our sponsors because we bring a lot of great conversations and we have great guests here and sharing that with you. And, uh, and the, our headline sponsor is EMC. I can't forget the headline sponsor. Big logo there, EMC. Uh, we're introducing headline sponsors and we're going to bring more content. We had a, uh, at both New York City and Silicon Valley, we had a great presentation from Jeff Kelly on his new research. We'll be doing more of this, introducing new free research and then bringing a panel of experts to extract the signal from the noise in a panel format in front of a live audience, streamed live to the whole world for free and we're proud to do it and certainly throw a party for our community after. So Jeff, uh, very exciting week here for Big Data SV. I am personally pumped and excited to associate myself with great content and people that we've interviewed. And again, New York City, same thing for the capital markets, uh, for the public companies and whatnot. So yeah. great event. What's your take? I mean, we're excited. Your new research was groundbreaking. I thought you had an amazing response from the crowd. The live stream is available on YouTube. Share with us your new research. What did you talk about and how did that play out over the course of Big Data sure. SV? Sure, well we talked about a few things. Um, a couple of the themes you know, that we've been following here during the CUBE broadcast as well was all about um, the enterprise. Making Hadoop ready for the enterprise was kind of what we've been hearing about leading up to the show. Um, and this show we started to kind of expand even beyond that to some extent with what are we going to do with all that data, Big Data analytics, uh, data science, um, and really where a lot of innovation is going to come from the Internet of Things. Um, in terms of, you know, we covered uh, some of the news that happened this week, obviously the big news was the open data platform announcement from Pivotal, Hortonworks, uh, IBM, EMC, others, uh, really with the goal of kind of uh, hardening and, and uh, solidifying the Hadoop core so we can open up application development on top of that core and, and accelerate adoption in the enterprise. Um, you know, one of the themes in my presentation was around, you know, some of the market dynamics and how we're expecting consolidation in this market. There's so much pent-up demand from the enterprise. Um, and while we have a lot of in innovation, and if you go to the floor of Hadoop, uh, Hadoop World Strata, you'll see all these great startups out there, and they're innovating great. But what startups do, they invent stuff, and they, they're, they're great at that. What they're not always as good at is kind of um, opening up their distribution channels and setting up some of the, the processes necessary to get that out into the enterprise. So we think there's going to be some co consolidation. We think some of the big guys are going to actually do quite well in this market. They're not necessarily being disrupted by big data. It's, a, it's an opportunity for them. Um, so that was another theme that we covered this week. I mean, as you how about, mentioned the, how about the How about the big three? Cloudera, Hortonworks, MapR, obviously mm -hmm. those are the big three. When Disco and others are all changing their strategy or changing their strategy well, and doing very well. They're not doing their own distro. That was a few years ago. Now right. they're well, winning. That, that was, yeah, I think the, I don't think you're going to see any new Hadoop distributions anytime soon. In fact, you might see some <laughs> go away. Um, when Disco, good call by When Disco. Yeah, well they were smart. They got out of that business. Um, you know, there's, I think there's room for one or two vendors you know, in that Hadoop distribution business. I don't think there's a room for five or six, so I think those were some smart decisions companies like Wandisco made. I mean, at one point we even had companies like Fujitsu who had their own Hadoop distribution. So you know, that's solidified around those three companies you just mentioned. Um, of course, Pivotal and IBM also have their own Hadoop distributions, but now part of the open data platform. They're not getting rid of those, they're keeping those if customers want them, but it, it seems to me like they are kind of sprinkling the holy water, if you will, on, on Hortonworks, the ODP team. Um, then you kind of got Cloudera and Intel in another camp. They're well capitalized. Certainly oh, the big three question. are very well capitalized. You talked about the, that. Between the three of them, they've raised over $1.6 billion over the last couple of years. So they're well capitalized. Hortonworks has gone public. 
Um, Clutter is probably on pace to go public sometime yeah. later in the year. They made an announcement around their, some of their revenues just a couple days ago, which leads us to believe now it's going to be a little bit further out. You can't comment on revenues if you're about to file. So um, it'll be a little further out. But um, yeah, they're all very well capitalized. And as we talked about on the show, you know, part of the reason for that is it, it takes a while to build this market because of the open source nature of it. On the one hand, the innovation happens very quickly in open source. We've seen that in the Hadoop space. It's, it's hard to keep up with all the new projects uh, and all the innovation around Spark and everything else that's coming out, and it's fantastic. The, the challenge, though, is building a business around all that can be challenging when you've got so much innovation happening. Uh, and so you need, to, you need patience, and uh, consequently, you need money. So that's one of the reasons we've seen so much money being raised. Uh, and I think the other thing is you've got a lot of startups who are, uh, sorry, you've got the big guys who are playing in this market as well. So the startups need cash to, <laughs> to fight the, the, the marketing battle. They've got to cut, cut through the marketing machines of the big players. So that's a couple of reasons I think you're seeing so much money being raised in this market. Is it a bubble? You know, you could say they might, some of these companies might be a little bit overvalued, but I don't think it's a bubble like we've seen in years past. It's not like the internet bubble, I don't think. Um, but the most exciting thing for me is we're really starting to get to the point where we're talking m less about the infrastructure, less about the plumbing, and more about yeah. the applications. And we're, we're getting there. It's yeah. still, it's look a little bit frustrating. We'd like to see more of that happening, but I, I feel like we're really on the precipice. Yeah, but you got to look at the, you got to look at the industry. I mean, you, you're right on the money. I told your research, I thought was right spot on. But if you look at the big three, and this is why it's close to my heart, because Cloudera, Horton, Morris, and Mapar really have shined and blossomed as companies. Um, I'm personally disappointed that Cloudera would not come on the cube. Um, that and cl company that I personally love and have a, a soft spot in my heart for it. I love that company. Watching that company grow, and Mike Olson, Amar Awadal, great people um, that have enabled a lot of people around them to be successful. Um, and the fact that O'Reilly will not let them come on the cube or whatever that rumor is really disappoints me, and I'm, I'm bummed about that. Hortonworks, we thank them for their sponsorship. It went public. I mean. I was, I remember criticizing Hortonworks when they <laughs> announced that they were coming out because we were such fanboys of Cloudera and they, and I challenged them, I said, guys, play, do, do well. And they did, they did grew and they went public. And then MapR sticking to their knitting, doing the boring well, stuff really well and making a boatload of well money. I would say, I would even say, they're not I even mean, just doing the boring stuff well, they're doing, they're, I mean, they're really innovating as well. Um, because of the nature of their business, you know, they've taken a, a, you know, they've been dinged because of their more proprietary than some of the open, other open source focused big data companies, but the reality is they're building pretty you know, high performance technology in this space, um, which you can do to some extent when, if you're not relying on a larger community because you can just focus on it, build it out, and get it out to, the, to your customers. Um, so they're doing pretty well uh, you know, as well. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's going to be a, a very uh, challenging market for all three of them going forward, but um, the other thing is there's just huge opportunity. Yeah. I mean, the TAM is enormous. You can't even calculate the And TAM the innovation's really. there. You know, on our panel, your research really highlighted the trends about the, win the rich get richer, and then there might be some death in startups, but also there's innovation still on the start. We talked to Ping Lee and Frank Artali, and they highlighted specifically, yeah, the grass is growing a little slow in some cases. In some places you got some blowout examples, but there's still great innovation. Well, the, thing, uh, the thing about this market that excites me is, you know, when you see you know, you, a new market emerge, you get a lot of startups innovating, and then when you see some of the big companies come in and maybe make some acquisitions, uh, and the, you know, their, their mandate then is to, just to ramp it up and get it out to the enterprise and start making a lot of money on it. And unfortunately, in some cases, that's where the innovation stops. The great thing about this market is, is because it's because of its open source nature, the innovation is going to continue, even as the big players come in. I mean, you know, IBM comes in, HP comes in, whoever the case, whoever the big whale is that comes in and makes some acquisitions, that's not going to stop Facebook and Netflix and Google and, and the other web companies from innovating and open sourcing their new technologies. And then there's going to be new startups to commercialize that. So I see this innovation continuing, um, and that's the exciting part about this market. And there's still so much opportunity uh, because of the application space, where ultimately that's where the value comes from. Yeah, and also one of the things we had with the, through the guests, the common theme was so the, 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 our event, on a uh, content event with your research in the panel, and then the live audience went extremely well. The party was fantastic. The party was great, there was biz dev. Kim Stevenson was there, the CIO of Intel, CUBE alumni, amazing person on the board of Cloudera. Um, she's been with us ever, ever since the Cube was here. We saw our CEOs, we saw our developers. It was really a great community, some great exchange of ideas. Um, it wasn't a pub crawl kind of format. It was, it was just more of a high-end, sharing ideas it was really fun. And then our guests were awesome this week. I thought the energy was intoxicating in terms of uh, the content uh, was so uh, motivating and inspirational. You had entrepreneurs, you had multiple PhDs on. We had great insight from data scientists. And of course, we had a ton of crowd chats. I thought I was going to OD on crowd <laughs> chats this, this week. But Jeff, great content. Um, Thank you. Anything stand out for you in the conversation? from a theme standpoint, well, I mean, what was the core theme that you saw 
percolate out of the cube like this I, year. I think, like I said, I think the biggest theme that I heard over and over again is that we're, the conversation is increasingly turning to analytics, data science, and then that kind of next step is operational and operationalizing that to the applications. So we heard great examples from Bill Schmarzo, the dean of big data came on, talked about some healthcare examples uh, that he's working with. We talked to some practitioners from uh, Simply Hired, talking about what they're doing with big data. It's not just about storing it, it's about analyzing data and, and delivering that in terms of data products. Uh, Halliburton, you know, kind of a 100 plus year old company in the energy market, listening to what they're doing with essentially the industrial internet data flowing off drilling equipment and seismic uh, data. So uh, to me, that was the most exciting theme hearing about what people are actually doing move, to move the, move the needle in terms of driving new revenue, solving some big societal problems, um, and really doing stuff with all this data rather than just, we're just talking about the infrastructure. So to me, that was the big theme that I um, uh, really enjoyed talking about this week. So I got to get the, I got to get the take from um, the guest perspective. Um, who do you think was the big sleeper out of our guests this the week? Big sleeper, that's a good question. Uh, let me think about that for a minute. I'm not, let me turn that back on to you while I think. Well, who do you think was the big sleeper? I th I mean I I thought Mich Michelle Chambers mm -hmm. um, was for me personally that interview was um, a good one because Rapid Mine is a Boston-based firm. Um, they're venture back. They're from Germany. And what what was interesting is it's not your you know hipster, product hunt driven, you know, venture backed company, blocking and tackling with a new twist. They're doing some very interesting things, solving their problems using modern techniques of signaling and crowdsourcing. I thought that was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. That I was one of my favorites. And the Google guy, Eric Schmidt, his name is Eric Schmidt, but it's not <laughs> Eric Schmidt, the billionaire who was the CEO <laughs> of Google. He's a product manager in the data flow, a cutting edge area, and he validated my data ocean thesis. The Google is right on the oh. money. Data Lake, he guy said, Data Lake is batch, Data Ocean is real time and streaming. A lot of concurrent changes going on. So Data Ocean is back on the table, Jeff. So so yeah, we, well, need, we need to do a whole anyone, research report on this. If anyone's got a Data Ocean, it's Google. Um, but so do you buy the thesis? Batch is a lake, okay? Well, batch Ocean, process. I guess you could say because Ocean has currents. And it has and unpredictable, All right, I, I'm with you on the analogy. Yep. ecosystems. Yep, okay, okay, yep. I can go with that. Um, <laughs> I think Riding the waves yeah, of innovation. Yeah, if you think of a lake is still and, and, and you know, not, not uh, evolving, I suppose, I, I think the Look, ocean I'm just going to say, well. ocean's the way to go on ocean's this one. Lake Maybe is we'll, passe. We'll, you know. we'll confer at Wikibon. Maybe we'll, we'll work that into our next research. EMC's paper. got to change their foundation to the Data Ocean Foundation. Well, you know. Part, of, you know, part yeah. of it is semantics, but I think that the important thing is that people are talking about operationalizing this We're stuff. We're going to start a meme. Getting data into, Ocean. Getting into the enterprise. Hashtag. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just looking back at some of the guests we've had. I mean, you know, I was impressed with Donna Perlich, who's the VP of Product and Solutions Marketing at Pentaho. Now, Pentaho just, uh, it's still pending an acquisition from for, uh, with uh, Hidachi Data Systems uh, is acquiring Pentaho. I thought she was really articulate about, um, you know, their approach kind of blending the data integration, um, essentially stream, the streamlined data factory, if you will, data pipeline, uh, having, having visibility end to end from the ingestion through the analytics. I thought that was, I thought she was a great guest. You know, you, know, uh, you, you, you reminded me that I was a, a big uh, winner and was early in the day, was on the first day was Rob Thomas at uh, IBM mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Beth Smith. IBM, I believe, has a great strategy, and, I, and, and Warren Buffett's now buying more shares, and so he's believing it, and I don't know if that's just more supporting the CEO or, and the company, but I see IBM as a winner, I'll tell you why. They have a huge legacy in large-scale systems, obviously mainframe, huge database background, you know, Oracle always talks about IBM. That's the only company Oracle constantly talks about in terms of competition is IBM. IBM's background in databases gives them a unique insight, and, and Rod, uh, Rob Thomas and the team at IBM, I think they see the vision, and they're onto this whole systems of engagement thing. And no one here in this show, uh, maybe a handful of people that I've talked to, really grok this whole systems of engagement concept out to the edge with Internet of Things. Systems of record, I, I see, uh, Jeff, mm -hmm. Everyone's got a good handle on it, data warehouse, analytics, but the systems of engagement is going to be a very cutting edge, and IBM is all over this. So I love that interview. I thought it was really, really diverse and broad and, and interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, some others just looking back at, at, at the schedule. Sometimes you got to look back. We did so many interviews, I got to be refresh my memory a little bit. I'm just going down day one. I love yeah. that one. I love that one. Sean Connolly and Leo Spiegel, from, uh, who's the SVP at Pivotal, he answered the questions. I gave him straight at him about the o ODP, he answered them straight up. 
looked me in the eye, delivered the answer, Sean Connolly does his normal self, and teased out the, the frameworks, where the lock-in specs are. He opened the, 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 the covers to the secrets of open source right here on theCUBE. That was awesome. Yep, and you know, I think, uh, looking back here, I think certainly Dr. Priya Darshi from Halliburton, data scientist, and uh, Dr. Chong from Simply Hired. We heard some similar themes from them about building data science teams, uh, and it's a very much a team sport. Not uh, they're not really looking at finding that that unicorn data scientist. They're looking at finding uh, various data scientists to build a team approach. Uh, I thought those were two great interviews. Love getting Bill Schmarzo was my favorite. He actually became an interviewer and interviewed us. Yes, he did. And, and he if you turned watch, the tables he on turns him. the table. So you know, we just had a, we just had, was talking to uh, Jim McHugh at Cisco last night and Bill Schmarzo. We might bring Cube alumni to be like. Guest anchors on the queue. Have guest hosts. Okay, it'll be like ESPN. Like we like and take the pressure yeah. off us. And then yeah, the last one I'd point out uh, today actually t uh, talking to Jar John Cardente from EMC talking about the climate uh, change project they're working on, uh, the climate change data lake essentially or data ocean. Sorry that they're creating to help handle to help uh, <laughs> deal with that kind of uh, challenging environment, if you will, no pun intended. So. Those are some of my favorite guests this week, but uh, well, you know, overall it was a great show. I don't think we had any bad guests. Let's well, just way. to summarize, it's a wrap for our Big Data SV, and I want to just thank all of our sponsors, our headline sponsor, EMC, Pivotal, IBM, Hortonworks, SingSword, Wendisco, BMC, Pentao, Traceda, H2O AI, Teradata, Inf Informatica, InfoObjects, and Platform. Thanks for your support. We are going to bring you more events like this, Big Data and SV, Silicon Valley, and New York City. We're off to Las Vegas for IBM Interconnect. And go check out interconnectgo.com. That's a website powered by the CrowdChat platform. And of course, now CrowdChat's available for everybody. Go there, we have some innovative CrowdChats this week. We are going to create the conversations, join the conversations, and bring you what's happening in the moment at the events on the front lines. This is theCUBE. I want to thank the team, everyone yeah, here. I, I, I want to give a job. shout out to the team, too. They did a great job this week. And you know, these guys got to get up early tomorrow. They're heading to Vegas. So great job, guys. Appreciate guys, great team. Guys on the ranch. Uh, Dave Vellante couldn't make it. Got snowed in Boston and holding down the fort down there with Stu Miniman, uh, Jeff Frick, Greg Stewart, the whole team. Guys, thanks for watching. Ariana with the crowd chats. Um, thanks so much, uh, guys. Appreciate it. We'll be back off to Las Vegas. Stay tuned and watch theCUBE, SiliconANGLE.TV. Thanks for watching and see you at our next event next week.